<clears throat> hey YouTube, graphical interfaces are neat, are they not? I mean, they're pretty ubiquitous, from Android to Windows to whatever this is. Uh, there's something about visual representations of objects on screen that you can interact with that's just far more intuitive than typing in commands on a black background. So that is what we're talking about today. Graphical user interfaces have a number of advantages. For one, unless you have a manual or a decent help command built into the program, you would largely just be left guessing as to what the computer expects you to type in what you can and can't do. With a graphical user interface, all the options are, well, hopefully anyway, presented to you in an easy to understand, intuitive manner that is also hopefully not as overwhelming as a long manual with a large list of commands. Not to mention, too many parameters, hyphen WP51. While still used and valued in programming, networking, and IT for their ability to present information succinctly and have a low performance requirement in comparison with their graphical counterparts, not to mention how much easier a utility that uses a command line interface compared to a graphical one is to program. To the general user, it just feels a lot more approachable to have a graphical user interface. There's something all, almost scary about a blank cursor. Imagine if you will, it's dead of night. The lights are off, not a noise around. Your coffee is a little too hot to drink, but its aroma wakes you, and you're ready for another night of work. You flip that power switch, and suddenly, the silence is replaced with the quiet hum of the monitor in the occasional clicking of a hard drive. What greets you is a black screen, void of any life or humanity, something beyond the natural. It is a window to the twilight zone. <laughs> Sorry. Well, y you get the idea kind of stares at you like it's putting pressure on you you know waiting for you to do something ready to spit out an error at you if you make the slightest typo rather than booting to a comfy welcoming desktop environment that almost feels like a room full of things to click and double click and right click and drag and middle click and shift plus left click and uh, you know you get it basically um, but yeah the history of graphical user interface is actually pretty long and really complicated and thus left for another time uh, today though we're going to be looking at a very specific one one example from quite a while ago from 1980s with the commodore 64 it is geos or geos however you prefer to say it let me know in the comments you know the drill uh, so anyway, let's dive right in. That, that's diving. Got it? N this is swimming. Alright, so to start off with, I think let's just load it and watch it boot up. And there it goes. As you can see, it's uh, rendering everything quite slowly, but... First off, we need a peripheral, so believe it or not, for the most part, people used it with joysticks instead of a mouse. Uh, they were just more common back in the day. You, those nice micro switches, it's a pretty good way of controlling it, but a mouse is certainly more natural and something that we're more used to now. Joysticks were used by a lot more programs, and by programs I mean games, so that's quite nice. So, first thing we're going to need to do is to set up our control input. So for that we're going to press uh, Commodore I. And as you can see we've got several selections, either a Commodore 1351 mouse or a joystick. While we haven't selected anything, we can use the cursor keys to move our cursor around. Just adjust the camera. As you can see, 
You can use the joy. You can use the cursor keys. So for our purposes, we'll be selecting the Commodore mouse, even though the mouse we have connected is actually just a USB mouse that I had lying around through the USB converter to joystick port that I've shown in my games video. Same way I control. Same way I used the PS4 controller. So we can click on stuff. Uh, we can move the cursor around. It's pretty smooth. Pretty nice. So I think first thing we should do is probably customize this. So I think Pad Color Manager manages our color for the file browser that we're in. So how about a different color scheme? But this one. Oof, that's, um, that's pretty garish, gotta say. Let's change that. I think like a teal, maybe? Like a teal color would be nice. Yeah, how about that? Save and exit. Hey! Well, that looks pretty nice. So I think in preference manager, unlike the pad color manager, yeah, we can select all the various colors for the actual OS outside of that window, inside of our file manager. Our file notepad, as it was called, or disk notepad, I'm not sure. So let's make it go white. Teal. Yeah, let's go for a full teal type theme. So we save and we exit. And it doesn't seem to have worked. Uh, oh, I guess we had to click change as well. Dang it. Oh, it's a, it's a little hard to stay on this menu. When you move your cursor off, it uh, kind of removes it from the screen. Go with a teal foreground, white background. Let's go to change first. Yeah, that should do it. And exit. It's pretty bright, but I kind of like it. Yeah, there we go. GOS Kernel, designed by Brian Doherty. Uh, I'm not gonna try to read these names. These people deserve more respect than that. But yeah, and um, the desktop itself, which is kind of just a program on it. Also, 1986-1988, Berkeley Softworks. Hope I didn't butcher that one at least. Let's uh, go on to the next page. So all the files and uh, programs are on these little pages and such. and. Let me just adjust the camera real quick. So we can also use number keys to get around, to get between the various pages. Let's try GeoWrite. An operating system ain't nothing without the programs contained with it. And I believe this is kind of the Word document program, Writer of Aterra. So let's go to create a new document. Just whatever. Yeah, and uh, we can totally type. I mean, you would hope we could, but 
This is just pretty neat to see that on um, Commodore 64. We've got capital letters, we got lowercase letters. You can highlight text, move it around. You can delete text and move with the cursor keys. But deleting text like this takes a while since it has to redraw the thing every time. So I think actually if we just highlight a block of text and then delete it, that will be better. And we can preview it, which <laughs> doesn't show you the text, just kind of vaguely shows you the location of it uh, on a would-be printed document. See, this only has 40 or so columns and you need to be able to write in a small font, so it it's all kind of not true to life. Yeah, let's change our mouse color to this one. Yeah. Kind of makes it more contrasty, a little easier to see. And you can only run one application uh, at a time, so we can't really switch between windows like that. We have to close one to go to the other one. How about um, bigger font? Go to a new line. Type some more. Yeah, this is pretty cool. We can change the where the text starts. Oh, it's line by line. Okay, I get it. That's pretty cool that you can have one line start on like the center or right and then another start a different place. Let's try this font. Make it big. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Make it bold. Hmm. close out of this file and yeah, let's quit. Let's see what else is around here, huh? Interesting. You can see our. See our file. Hopefully it'll load. Yeah! There we go. So we can just click on our files and load, and we don't need to start the program first and use the open option within the program. Yeah. Also, we've got a calculator, kind of a mainstay of uh, most graphical user interfaces at this point, of uh, graphical user interfaces for operating systems, I should say. But yeah, it, it works. I mean, I hope it does. Uh, I don't know. I can't do that kind of math in my head, but uh, yeah, I mean, not as fast anyway. Give me some time, I might be able to do it. 
Anyway, let's go to the notepad. I wonder how that differs from this text editor. Well, for one, it's not a full screen application. And yeah, we can't drag or resize windows in this. They're just where they are. I do like that neat shadow effect, though. That's kind of reminiscent of like Mac OS. This is my note. Let me zoom it in so you could see. Yes, yeah, so what does this do then? Ah, so this is for sort of our hardware configuration and your eyes aren't fooling you, that does say RAM expansion. There are many RAM expansions for the Commodore 64. The one meant to be used for, with this back in the day would have given you as much as 512 kilobits of RAM, kilobytes, sorry, um, of RAM usable with this. So it, it would make it quite a bit faster and quite a bit more capable. And certain later uh, versions of this, including ones made by hobbyists, uh, do require things like a super CPU or a RAM upgrade and things like that. I believe the 1541 Ultimate cartridge allows you to have 16 megabytes of RAM, which is pretty insane. Uh, because the Commodore 64 stock only has 64 kilobytes. Some stock files. Hmm. Wonder what Geo spell is? A spell checker? Some kind of another text editor? Oh, it's some kind of dictionary thing. Let's open that. Um, okay. Alright. Uh, uh, well, it's doing something. Suspect words. I wonder what a suspect word is. I guess this really is like, it spell checks stuff and then suggests you corrections. Wow, that's, um, that's way ahead of its time, huh? So what if we click that and then... <laughs> okay, so you pick your own suggestions, I suppose. Uh, get the spellings of it, right? So yeah, it is really kind of like a non-automated spelling correction thing. Would be quite useful for um, why what why is it not highlighting the whole word? Uh, Urs. Anyway, um, yeah, it, it would it would kind of um, kind of be useful, I imagine, for large word documents instead of just manually reading through them. You'd have this program to assist you and replace uh, the wrong words with whatever you want and. Yeah, I imagine you could also make your own personal dictionaries. Like, if you're about to send out a business newsletter and you had a term specific to your business in there, you would uh, add those to a dictionary so that the program would know to uh, ignore them. I don't know what this is. Photo album. I'm pretty sure you can't view any photos, but... me no okay so i guess this is like a folder it's like a photo folder there's nothing we can really do all right let's just close out of it for now uh oh i 
I saw something similar for um, text, I think. It was like text manager. I imagine that probably does the same thing just for text files rather than graphics. So, um, now it was GeoWrite and um, Notepad and Calculator. How about some GeoPaint? You know, that's kind of the fun of a computer gamer with no computers is to load up MS Paint way back in the day. Yeah, so I guess this is sort of similar. Um, painting. I'm sure it'll end up being a masterpiece. All right. Oh, uh, oh, right. Okay. And at the bottom there, we've got like a page indicator. So I assume that's... Um, that means we're actually painting something to be printed out on an A4 page, which makes sense. I mean, why else, right? I'm not going to be sending... Well, internet wouldn't be a thing back then, so... Digital publication, as in publication on a digital format, probably wasn't such a big deal, you know? Hmm. Total masterpiece. Oh, oh, I can't undo more than one thing. Oh, that, that kind of makes sense, but... You know, the rest of this is so modern that... Oh, oh, my favorite tool from paint. Everyone's favorite tool from paint, rather, I should say. Um, yeah, it's, it's sort of the graffiti tool, except... I think the graffiti tool is a little random. Is it even called that? I don't know. Um, oh, hey, we got the... Got the scrubber. So erase everything. Um, doesn't seem to react too well when I move my mouse really fast. Like, um, yeah. But it certainly works and it's a hell of a lot smoother than I thought. You know, I, I, I think considering the main interface is like redraw the screen all the time, but no, I mean, it's really not, Well, this isn't so nice, but I get the idea. Text box. Right. About a little little gamer reference. Uh oh whatever. Okay, that that's um this is Sammy Colin now. <laughs> Instead of an apostrophe. What does this do? Oh it's a filled square tool. And I imagine that below it is a filled circle tool and this is a outline tool. Wow, this is almost like an abstract masterpiece. Look at that, those two squares. Uh, I don't know what this does. It look, I, It's a sink? So is that like the paint bucket tool? Except it's a sink for some reason? Like with a droplet coming out of it. Yeah, wow, look at that. It's really filling it up. Um, so, oh, okay. Oh, that was surprisingly quick. Um, yeah. So, so what does the... Oh, hold on. Uh, oh, why does this change my color like that? I, I only wanted to select the color... Huh. Doesn't seem to do anything. Oh. I guess we can draw little squares in the color. Well, really don't know. Anyway, um, um, oh, textures. What? What about them? That doesn't do change anything. Oh, oh, there's that texture with the lines. <laughs> now it's even more abstract looking. And look, it didn't fill those white things I drew before. What about, um, the color? Oh, would be cool to fill in those, um... Oh. 
I guess I'm just gonna ignore them. But you can still see them underneath. That's so weird. I oh, I guess that color tool works as like you can put another color on your canvas and have like a double color background. It, it's pretty weird. I'm not sure I'm right, but that kind of seems to be the suggestion here. And this looks pretty creepy now, huh? I don't know. The, those red stripes, the white stuff there, really, I think we have reached peak, uh, peak art. And the preview is just a green square. I assume that's just a representation of our painting at the top left corner of the page. Let's close out. And it doesn't ask you to save because I think all the changes are saved in real time. Uh, I'm pretty sure anyway. Wow, um, that was uh, that was interesting. I it's not the kind of paint program I expected. It it's a lot better. It's a lot a lot better. Some of those files are just drivers, uh, as you can see. There's fonts. I mean, since I'm running it all of one uh, floppy disk image, it's kind of all has to be on here. I wonder what Geo Laser is. Is that for like laser printing? <laughs> Uh, that's that's my best guess. Let's see what it is. Uh, oh, that looks a little cursed at the top. Choose RS-232 serial transfer rate. Huh. Okay. I'd like to know what this does, but I don't have my Linux computer set up with the... to receive data over serial. Uh, uh, watch my previous video if you want to know what I mean. Um, yeah, alright, so it seems like it just transfers certain types of files over. Text grabber. I know who that is. Some kind of. Mm -hmm. Like a converter, maybe? It's not text manager. Alright. Easy script form, word writer form. Choose word process. Oh, I guess this is a converter for like changing from different word processors. Yeah, I got some random files. I have no idea what some of these do. I am. I guess they're in that format, perhaps, or not. Um, yeah. Okay, well, I, I, I guess. Um, should we try it? I don't know. I mean. Let's, let's try it and press enter. I'm guessing it'll fail because I don't actually know what it was like. Uh, oh, unrecognized character. Okay, yeah, I feel like this is going to go south because I don't know uh, what exact format these files would be using. They were kind of already on the image that I got. Now we got disk menu, select, page, options, set clock. Let's try try setting clock. Pretty sure this isn't Y2K proof. 1988? I'm, I'm not sure it would be. So maybe we'll be in the 1920s for now. alarm clock. Is that gonna s set off an alarm? <laughs> uh, don't see how that would work without it open, but hold on. Time? I, I don't get this really.
Oh, okay. I just set my time to that. I wonder if that other button did it, but then I'm not sure. I, I can't really imagine an alarm clock uh, working here. Because it's not a multitasking operating system. Especially not preemptive multitasking. Hmm. So, I think we've like covered uh just about everything how about reset does that oh yeah that just resets gos so it doesn't actually bring me back to basic which i could kind of guess because there's a button that says uh basic there so i'm sure that one will bring me back to basic hey there we go not fast load routines though <laughs> now we're in fast load routines let's boot back to gos And um, the reason I'm doing this is to demonstrate that it does actually save the configuration. You don't have to change things every time. Except it didn't save the time. But alright, I mean, maybe it couldn't parse uh, being in 1920s and that's why it didn't save it. I don't know. It's set to 92 though, for whatever reason. Maybe the version I got is from 92? No, the copyright said 1988. So, meh. Who knows? Um, yeah, alright, so that was GOS, the operating system of the 80s. It's so, so, so monumental but that I find it uh, really hard to believe that it wasn't more recognized than it is. I mean, also, uh, I'm just checking if we can delete more than one file, so I'm going to delete our little Word document and restore it. I'm pretty sure we can only delete one file because there's an undo delete button and I think it functions the same way as the undo button in the paint program where only one action can be undone as opposed to like a whole history of actions like we're used to today. So yeah, um, yeah okay so it's there, it's there. Um, anyway yeah like I was saying I, I think this is really cool like for an 8-bit computer uh, this is really just incredible and I could see this being useful too with programs you can write for it you can write programs on it using it as an ID of sorts um, so yeah I mean it certainly makes the computer feel so much more modern using a mouse like that and a keyboard I think that if I didn't know better and you told me that this is a 16-bit computer I would just think that it's a, you know, low spec 16 bit computer because you compare this to like, um, just the looks at least. You compare this to some like, um, Amiga Workbench, uh, which I'd love to cover, but I don't have an Amiga. Um, you compare them and there's really not that much difference at first glance anyway. Of course, Amiga Workbench is a lot more functional, important, and necessary, but yeah, I mean, at first glance, this really sells you the fact that there's a graphical user operating system. Yeah. Anyway, um, I can't highlight text and notepad. I think this is it for me, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe, uh, like, comment if you enjoyed this. Uh, this is a little less edited. I feel like we just uh, take a comfy tour of GOS and. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot and have a great day.